they'll feel like I'm crooked. All right. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? I have Bobo with me today. Go we're, on. Uh, we're testing out whether or not we could get this to work. It's my old self trying to figure out all this stuff and uh and bobo decided to join me to see if this, this could work so so actually we figured it out it was pretty easy so too bad for a couple old guys now yeah yeah not so bad so what i have on the screen which we were just talking about is a bunch of uh 3d printed wings that i was starting with at the time when i first started with this uh danny miles had hooked me up with a, a link through uh, Autodesk, where they had some like you learn program. It was if you use like a educational email address, you could download um, some free like demo software. And in one of them was uh, like a CFD suite. So I was able to sit and like play with some of this stuff. And uh, to give everybody an example, what I was trying to figure out was this. So, like normal turning car wings and that are just basically a shovel. You're just trying to create some downforce from the air that runs across the top. I apologize. It may get chaotic because, again, the kids are going to be running around packing for hockey. Um, but uh, what the trick is with, like, Formula One wings and real wings is to actually accelerate the air under the wing to make downforce. So... You get um, low pressure here, high pressure here. Now, disclaimer, I'm not a neurodynamicist. I just looked at lots of crazy flow pictures like this. I've done some of this stuff at work, just like remaking shapes and things like that for um, brake cooling components and things like that. But as far as actually like giving you the full technical jargon of this, outside of my scope. Outside of my scope. So. Um, but this is the kind of stuff I was playing with in the CFD program that I was able to use uh, for a little bit. I did try to to get back into it, and it's too old, what I had in here. So I actually have to go back and, like, try and re-download stuff and, um, you know, see if I can get myself back into it to, to be able to do it. So to give you a quick idea... Still having to flip back and forth on screens because I don't have two monitors yet. I want to. Um, let's see. So what I had was this was kind of like my reference one. And at some point before I moved, I did have a big notebook of all the drag and downforce and all the different variables of all this stuff. But uh, I don't have that book anymore. I can't find it. Maybe I'll find it, but who knows. So what this would be like a standard wing that would come in a protoform at the time. This was another one I made. Uh, this one actually went up onto Shapeways is like our medium downforce is what I called it. And then this one was a high downforce. Uh, some of you guys may have seen the YouTube video I posted a while ago. I think it's actually still on the channel um, from the, the vision stuff that I was doing that I, I put on um, the Shapeway site. Um, some of the guys were breaking them, especially back in this area. So I beefed them up made a different version of it where I kind of pulled the, the side dams forward and had it mounting a little bit farther back. And then we just went into, and you can kind of see by this center right here, you can kind of see that kind of keeps moving and the height to the bottom of the side dam. Basically, like the airflow and how it how it's introduced to the wing, like the attack angle. This is all, your dad knows all this stuff from all the NASCAR stuff. Oh, well, dad would be all over this stuff. Yeah, so... I started playing with different curvatures, you know, and you can see like the relation to the vents because all these side dams are basically the same, but like this kind of relations and all of this. So it was just, I just kept playing and trying to learn and trying to learn and trying to learn and, and evolving it, trying to make a wing uh, that would make more downforce without making any extra drag. So, and some of them were actually really ridiculous. So I have, a lot of figure that out. You know? What's that? You can make a lot of money figuring out how to create downforce and, and save Oh, drag. yeah. Well, <laughs> I mean, yeah, but I mean, I, that also for me means a lot of school I have to go back to do and a lot of math that I don't want to do. I'm too old to learn all that now. Yeah. But, um, but so the last one I ended up with was this one. So this one, I actually was cleaning up here. 
And I actually still have two. So this one was actually one that I think um, Kyle Klingforth ran in IIC some years ago and actually TQ'd and then traction rolled and broke it and had to use a normal one. And I don't remember. He may have still won and everything, but he really liked it. And uh, Mike G pinged me and he's like, hey, why don't you load up all those wings to grab, grab CAD? So if we want to play with them, we can. Um, the only problem with these is the mounting holes. So if I remember right, do, 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 do. When did you make these? When would this have been? What's that? When did you make these? Like, what uh, generation of bodies would this have been around? Oh, these were for, like, LTCs. Okay. So, like, most of these wings are on a 100 millimeter center. Now, I didn't realize how many wings I had in this file. <laughs> so, like, this one, I started stripping out the mounts and adding, because Mike told me that the standard mounting, I believe, was 95... 97 and 100 millimeters. So, but as you can see, there, there's a lot of them. So what I'm going to do is I'll probably just uh, uh, <clears throat> upload this set, and then I'll upload like a, uh, I'll upload like a, I don't know, like another variable set that you can drill holes in. So these ones will already be up there at 100, which if I check my message... Oh, what body did he say it would fit? So I think he said like 100 millimeter was for the DBX, 97 for the Twister, and 95 for the Montec. Uh, obviously, these were set up for 100 from Protoforms at that time. I don't know if Protoforms changed. <laughs> You're already checking your Nitro body. <laughs> you mommy, got... mommy, rotate it so you can get a better measurement off the screen, Bobo. <laughs> So, but one of the things, like, Monty Panzeca also tested some of these with me, and one of the things we were surprised about is even, like, the vents. It actually did help the car be more consistent in yaw as far as still having side bite and not doing any weird stuff. So these actually did make a difference because I did actually, like, break one of these where I just had, like, a ear, and I mounted normal side dams on them, and they definitely weren't as good. So, so even the side dam cutouts and this kind of stuff, F1 does it for a reason. This actually works. Now, one disclaimer, when we were playing with these, and when I was playing with them in CFD, uh, in order to get, like, the airflow to stay attached, not that one. I keep doing that. That one. Oh, that one. There we go. And so, in order to get the airflow to, to kind of come in here and stay attached especially back through this area. Um, this is where it's really, really important and very speed sensitive. So obviously the faster you go, the more difficult it is to kind of keep everything attached back on this backside. And um, really this doesn't work properly until you're up around 40 miles an hour. So that was one of the things I learned playing with, CVD, with CFD and a lot of other aero guys that I've asked at work actually told me the same thing. So... Um, for like nitro sedan, modified Turing, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know if stock Turing is up at that speed, but in some of these tracks it might be nowadays. But, uh, but, but you box a new mod. Yeah, yeah, they're too fast. So um, interesting stuff. They, they were fun to play with. And like I said, it was one of those things to where if I actually had or spent, spent time, because the, the surfacing stuff takes some time. Anybody that's done any of the bodies or any of that knows that. But to actually, like, have a complete package where you could actually run these in CFD off the back of a proper car, you, I think there's a lot to gain. But, you know, or you just cut out the stock plastic one off the back of the body and call it a day. So, Yeah, I think a lot of people definitely overlook that. They just hack that thing out and throw it on there and figure, well, that'll do the trick. But <laughs> there's a lot going on back there. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, it's, you've seen the trend. I mean, everybody keeps just taking these bodies and mounting them further forward or pushing the cab forward and making the front overhang more and then hanging the wings further off the back or as big as they can make them or whatever. And it's, it's just free traction. So. Nitro. I mean, I mount them six, six mil behind the wheel well, basically, or not yeah. six, a long way. It's just, yeah, it's yeah. 
Yeah, what, I think it's like 10 or 15 mil off the rear deck or whatever. Or actually, it's uh, 10 off the bumper bumps. That's why everybody keeps adding like the license plate, like bump outs on the back bumper is so they can push the rear wing back because whatever that furthest. Oh, I remember when that was they first started actually checking that. Yeah, so that's that's why they added those bumps on the rear bumpers for the license plate is to try and drag all that stuff further back and further back because that they were still allowing it. It wasn't the bumper, but whatever those ridges are, I don't I don't have the body. They're like ten mil on this this uh, P forty seven I have right here. Like that's, yeah. I don't think that's quite the scale. <laughs> no, 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 not at all, not at all. So. But uh, but like I said, I mean they they were pretty cool. I, I've this was my next requested CAD item to get up there, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna probably pick this one here. I'll probably do the next closest one curvature wise, which is this red one here that doesn't have this step up in the middle. If if I had to guess, to give me an example, this was version 17 and this was 16. To tell you how many I did, and yes, there's more down in the line, but they obviously weren't any good because I never finished them and put them up on Shapeways. Um, so I'm going to put up these two, and then I will put up these two because this one I know we ran, and this was kind of the next evolution of it. That's really interesting to me with the the split with the I guess you would call it a I don't even know what you want to call it, but having the separation there to maybe. Did that it was that big on on drag did it really make a difference it actually wasn't so much a drag thing but a downforce thing so it, it was just about releasing the air letting it yeah it's just just continuing to accelerate the flow of air over all this and I, it was surprising how like even the the couple guys that have asked me about getting these uploaded they've said straight away that they couldn't believe how good these wings were like at the end of the straightaway and through the sweepers because the cars didn't seem to lose steering. They just gained rear grip and stability, consistency, that kind of stuff. So, um, so I, I, I don't know. I mean, it's been a long time since I played with any of these. I know I liked them, but the biggest problem was just they would break. So with the new materials and everybody, not everybody, but a lot of people, I think, have their own. Um, they have their own. Um, 3d printers at home I mean now they don't you know they can play with these and print them or break them or try different materials or you know finishing process on them or whatever rather than buying them off of shapeways and they're probably a lot cheaper because the, the SLS uh, selective laser sintering nylon that I was using from uh, uh, from shapeways they're they're if I remember right they're like 16 20 bucks a wing something like that so they weren't cheap and especially for you know as kind of brittle as they were you could you could yeah. traction roll and like yeah. shred them so so i don't i don't think anybody will care if they print them out of some stuff on their own 3d printers and uh and tear up one or two because they're probably going to only cost them maybe five bucks or something like that so you have to do a 3d printing video dude i want one so bad i, I want one so bad Oh geez, that is wild. I've been I've been talking about it for forever. You know, before the track closed, I actually, which mind you, I'm so glad I didn't buy, because I was actually going and I had started the process with, uh, um, I believe it was Desai Solutions. They were selling the Dimensions 3D printer, so it was like, <laughs> it was like the quality of something that's like 150 bucks today, but it was going to be like. 12, 15, 12 to 15 grand for something like the size of a refrigerator that I was going to put in my office at the track. So <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of glad that like things started not going all that great and I didn't waste that money because uh, well, there's one thing I, that went I would have had this big worthless refrigerator of crappy 3D printing technology sitting in my office there. So one more thing I had to move out of that place. <laughs> so as well, well, one positive. <laughs> Yeah. No refrigerator size printer. Yeah, yeah. And the, the the funny part is I remember getting samples of how bad that stuff was, thinking, man, I gonna have to figure out how to like post process it to to make it so that it's usable to test or try stuff. But now now the quality of this stuff is so impressive that uh you know and and they're cheap. They're crazy cheap. So so 
we'll see. We'll see if anybody plays with them. Hopefully, uh, hopefully some guys do and they can learn something on how to print with them and make them work good. And well, they should. I just tell you before we came on here. I was just talking about this with someone else. Just simply talking about with all the lightweight bodies, sometimes just using a regular weight wing will be a big difference compared to a lightweight wing. Oh yeah, for sure, Stuff for sure. Like you just don't. That was you well, really you know. I mean, you know, from the A-scale bodies, I mean, the body stiffeners and all that stuff that are mandatory. And that was actually one of the things that's in some of my stuff that I started drawing. Now, granted, the bodies have changed, so they're kind of irrelevant at this point. But I started drawing body stiffeners for, like, sedans and A-scales and um, a lot of this stuff just, you know, 12-scales even, just to try and make it to where the bodies weren't fluttering around so bad because you lose so much downforce and especially side bite. When you turn into a corner and the body folds under, you, you lose a lot of traction. So that's one of the things I started drawing to have 3D printed body stiffeners. You know, you can put on with a little two millimeter or 256 screw and uh, attach them to the sides, you know, right behind the front wheel, right in front of the rear wheel. And then back to from the, you know, the one I had was actually like a, it was almost like a weird bracket that kind of ran from the rear wing mount and would attach onto the body post. So you'd like drop your body clips down a hole and it would like tie in from there to the body post to the outside fender. So you wouldn't have body tucks and that kind of stuff. Okay. That was back when we were running like the paper thin alphas and I was gonna say, that stuff right after that. Those that things era. were so bad. You would freaking cut the wheels out, cut the wheel walls out and they would just flop open because they <laughs> didn't even have the strength to be straight. Yeah. Well, a lot of the reason why the Lexan bodies would do that is because they would be doing cold pulls. So if you take a body and you try and vac form it and the, the tool is too cold and it cools the, the Lexan too much, that's what happens. It, it, it right away just wants to roll and flare out, you know, like, a, you know, mud flap hats, you know, with the, the, yeah. the wings over your ears type of thing. So that's one of those things to where, uh, you know that that's just a process thing where manufacturers weren't doing a good job at heating the the vac form tools at the right temperatures to make anything work right. So I've heard it's a good idea not to put that stuff on backwards. That's my experience pulling body. I did about four. And five. That. What's that? I pulled a body. I pulled the body upside down. From Pulling them in your garage or molding them in your garage, whatever you want to call it. Oh. I stuck the plastic to the mold. I don't know if you remember. Oh, yes, the mold release stuff. Oh my gosh, yes, that was such a nightmare. Yeah, yeah. Or the, not the mold release, the uh, protective covering, like overspray yeah. protector. Yeah. You put one in the wrong way or something when you weren't looking. And yeah, that was. I might have got yeah, that, that a couple times. That, right? That's been done. Yeah, it's not as bad as crappie. I think yeah. I, like, I don't remember if, who else was with him. If it was like Crappie and McNish and some of the guys, but when I had that vac former going in the garage, they decided they were going to come over and help me do a bunch of A scale bodies, which was awesome. It was greatly appreciated. I could I could work on chopping them up and all the excess plastic off, and those guys could could terrorize uh, pulling them. But I turn around and look, and like Crappie's got a fork in like off the side of the mold, so like the tools here, and then there would be like a fork over here and a golf ball over here and a matchbox car over here <laughs> what are you doing like every time they're cracking up laughing they were just random grabbing random stuff you know somebody threw their car keys in there like what are you doing? Kids, i tell you man, kids these what days. are you guys doing like why what, what? <laughs> it's like oh it's not messing up any bodies is it I'm like no but <laughs> you're gonna put something in there big enough to mess it up knock it off so but yeah those those guys kind of were Terrorizing the machine for a while. That machine is actually at J Concepts now. No kidding. The one yeah. from the one from the garage. Yep. Yeah. Jason wound up getting all my old uh, uh, my vac former and all my Lexan and stuff. So yeah, I think that's what they started making all their on road stuff on. So yeah. It, at least it went somewhere to good use. So it's not like it was doing much sitting in my garage collecting dust and getting cleaned off every few months just so it wasn't filthy and non-functional. Had a hell of a run there at the beginning. Oh, the box, or whatever uh -oh. they were. Man. Yeah. All right. So you ready to cut this one off? And because uh, Angel's going to fire up the Sparks, the skate sharpener over here because they got a game oh. against HB right now. Priorities. So, yes. It's time to get ready to go.
yell at referees and have fun watching the kids play. Don't be that dad. Don't be that dad. <laughs> hey, I haven't, I haven't smacked the I haven't smacked the glass and broken the glass. Have you seen that clip? <laughs> Have you seen that clip? Way to go, Paul. No. <laughs> Dude, I'll, I'll share it on my I'll share it on my Facebook. It is so funny. It is so funny. I was laughing so hard. Go ahead. So all right. All right. Good talking about it. We'll do more of these. Yeah, for sure. Alrighty, sir. Catch you later. Right, see ya.